Yeah, yeah, fair to say, uh, yeah, we got in late last night, but uh, yeah, all good. Um, how are they looking for team news for Sunday? Yeah, um, I guess uh, first things first, last night, uh, all good. Uh, obviously, boys feel fairly tired, but um, physically no issues from last night's game. And then uh, out of the guys who sort of stayed back, um, Destiny... Uh, we think we'll be okay. We've obviously got training today and tomorrow, so he's got to get through that. Uh, Sunny, unlikely. Um, you know, again, he's, he's pushing hard, but I, I just don't think uh, the turnaround will be uh, quick enough and uh, uh, for him to be uh, available at this stage. And then uh, that's it. The others are kind of long term. I remember a few years ago, Son was touch and go, and he went on international duty. Given what he's been saying, is it fair to say? Can rule Sun out for international duty, do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, if he doesn't play for us, um, you know, and like I said, it's not like he's close, then uh, it makes sense. Uh, but, you know, again, we always have to be mindful. International duty, national teams take over. Um, yeah, they're the custodians of their players, but we've given them all their medical information. They understand and they're, they're understanding and, and Sonny knows the situation. I'm sure you're absolutely delighted for Dom Solanke to make the England squad. In terms of James Madison, who's had a really good start as well, you former international manager yourself, and he's, he's an emotional guy and he, he speaks so well. What have you said or what will you say to him? Because I'm sure he'll be disappointed. Yeah, look, I'm sure he's disappointed, but, you know, that, that at the same time, he's playing well. So, you know, it's not... Sometimes that's all you can do. And, and um, you yeah, know, these things... Uh, um, come along at times it's not always perfect in your career and there are situations and circumstances that don't mean you don't always get what you want but it shouldn't deter f or, or detract from everything else you're doing so he's playing really well for us I think he's been outstanding all year um, he's making an impact in every game he plays he's a really important part of our midfield setup and if he continues to do that I'm sure he'll get selected again but um, yeah there's no you can't just sort of put everything in one basket of, you know, just being disappointed because you haven't missed out. I said that shouldn't have any effect on him and, and the way he's playing because he's, he's been brilliant for us. 50 games in charge of Spurs last night, it's flown by. Uh, um, where do you see the Spurs in 100 games under your management? <laughs> well, <laughs> many wouldn't have said that I'd make 50, mate. Um, <laughs> even when I was on about 46, so... Uh, um, Look, it's it, it, obviously you know. As managers, we uh, there's always a kind of um, ticking clock against our tenure at all times. So anytime you reach a, a, a sort of milestone, it's always, uh, I guess, uh, um, an indication of uh, people still believing what you're trying to do. So it has flown by. To be fair, you know, it's obviously uh, 15, 16 months, 50 games, but. Uh, um, Enjoyed every one of them, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, next 50 are uh, you know ones where uh, we can make a real impact. Hi, Ange. Hey. Great way to mark 50 games with Tottenham's best winning run for three and a half years. How close to the desired level is your team right now? Well, it's always kind of a, a shifting uh, sort of measurement for us or scale in that yeah, you know, every time you, know, you, you go on sort of any consistent run of form and I think we've been consistent all year um, obviously the results in the last five games if you we've know, got the rewards for the performance but you know that always kind of you know makes you even more eager to keep pushing on and get better and uh, <coughs> see what level we can reach I still think <coughs> we're a developing side you know we're still very much a young side um, you know the squad's still you know um, developing together um, which suggests whatever markers we set at the moment we should be able to exceed um, but there's no doubt when you win games like I said we have uh, in recent times um, that belief and uh, I guess that energy just you know accelerates and um, the key to that is to keep it going you know we, we you don't want to let it go you want to work as hard as we have so far to, to keep this sort of uh, momentum going Looking ahead to Brighton, just wanted to ask you about Fabian Herzler, 31 years old, younger than most most people in this room. What do you make of the job he's done at Brighton? How impressive has he been? Yeah, great. I mean, he's uh, yeah, 31. It's 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 crazy, but um, you know, I think that's about the age I started, uh, albeit at not this level. Um, 
Uh, yeah, really impressive. He, um, you know, when he was coaching St Paul, he, uh, he coached uh, Jackson Irvine, who I had the Socceroos. He's a great player, but a fantastic person as well. And he, uh, he actually reached out to us and said, Fabian's, a, you know, likes what you're doing. Can he come pay a visit? He, he came and spent a day with us last year and um, he asked a hell of a lot of questions and I gave him too many answers, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> If I had only been Brighton manager, but you could tell he's just a real student of the game. Um, you know, wanted as much knowledge. He's all, he was already sort of a, a senior manager, and you know, he got them promoted last year, so he's already doing a good job. But he was that. You could tell when somebody's got that sort of curiosity, and I think that's a key for all managers. I think, especially young ones, is you you got to maintain that. You know, it can get sucked out of you uh, at times because you you when you get into the battle of, and particularly at this level of dealing with. You know, one crisis or another, you can forget that, you know, it's that curiosity to always, you know, find out more information. I think if he maintains that, um, you know, he'll be an outstanding manager. But he's, you know, he's hit, he's done well. Look, it, it's probably a perfect fit for him because I think Brighton are a fantastic club. They they careful about who they put in as manager. There's, there's usually an alignment there, which I wonder sometimes with other clubs whether they even think about that stuff. So he's in a great place. Do you remember any of the questions he asked you? What was he the asked question? a lot. Yeah, no, I, I actually palmed him off at one stage because he was asking <laughs> me too many, so I gave him to the other coaches. But, um, yeah, um, but yeah, he, look, he was just inquisitive about everything, you know. Obviously, like I said, uh, he was already a senior manager. He was doing a good job, but the fact that he, he still wanted to ask and obviously had observed us, uh, and I'm sure other clubs as well, it wasn't just us, but, um, yeah, it made a real impression on everyone. Last trip to the Amex was one to forget for Tottenham. What did you learn from the defeat that day? Yeah, it was a, it was a curious one because we, yeah, we, we, again, it was one of those periods where we were a bit disrupted with in terms of you know, player availability and stuff. But we, we, we started the game really poorly, really open, and then by the end of it, it could end up four four, you know, five four. But um, yeah, we didn't handle the occasion well, particularly early in the game, but. You know, it was kind of indicative of our season where there was some good stuff in there that got overshadowed by, you know, stuff that, you know, we really struggled with at times last year just in terms of our consistency of performance. So, you know, so far the away games we've had this year, we've, we've you know, we've, we've played really well. I mean, Leicester we should have won. Newcastle thought we played really well but didn't win. Um, you know, obviously, Man U, we, 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 we played well there, so... We're handling, you know, even last night playing away from home in Europe, I think we're handling those situations better, so we're going to have to do on the weekend too. Thanks. Hi, Ange, how are you? Oh, I'm good, mate. Um, Dominic Slank is in the call-up. Are you firstly surprised it's taken so long since his last international call-up to be called back into the England squad? And secondly, how much is it vindication of the hard work you and he have put in at the beginning of the season? Um, well, I don't know, surprised. I mean, like I said, with Dom, he's had to work awfully hard in his career and um, it's, it's, it's a salient point to all young players that, you know, the, the trajectory doesn't always, you know, go in sort of a linear fashion where he started at big clubs. He was obviously, you know, he was a youth international. He was, you know, he obviously made an impact, but just for one reason or another, it didn't get started, but it didn't deter him. You know, he went to Bournemouth and he worked awfully hard and, you know, had a year in the Championship. So there was, you know, I think there's reasons why he wasn't selected. Uh, certainly his last, you know, 13, 14 months um, in terms of his goal up output, even before that, uh, in, especially last year in the Premier League, um, you know, got him into the frame, even for the Euros. He was probably um, really close to getting selected there. And uh, it's it's all down to him, mate. I, I, I've had him for, what, a month. I've got zero to do with his achievements to get into the England team. It's it's to do with him, and even the way he's handled his move here. Um, you know, big club again for him. Um, you know, obviously uh, big expectations, and um, yeah, unfortunately got injury. But since he's been back from from that injury, he's been brilliant for us um, in all aspects. And uh, credit to him. But more exciting for me is I know there's a hell of a lot more to come. I can tap into your experience at international level with footballers. Um, before the last gathering of international break, under-21 level, um, Unai Emery was a bit critical that Morgan Rogers was playing for the under-21s, questioning what he would learn from that. You've got Archie Gray in the under-21s this time round. You had him last time as well. What 
Just pl- what do players like Archie learn from playing youth football in their, their countries? Yeah, I, I guess it depends. I, I think it's kind of, yeah, I always think these things that you, you should kind of treat them on an individual basis because I think, you know, for different footballers uh, at different levels in their career um, and depending on sort of their their, their workloads, um, international football can be a real benefit. I think Archie will benefit a lot from being with the under-21s because you, you've got to remember with Archie, he's really had one year of really senior football and that was a championship level. He's kind of just breaking into this level now, Premier League level. And um, I think the more experiences we can give him at this young age, um, the better he'll be moving forward. But, you know, there could be another player who's already got that, you know, by 18, 19, has that experience. You know, he's had two or three years of senior football. And I can understand maybe under 21 international football, particularly when you're talking about Premier League players and their workloads, you kind of think, is there a benefit? But I really think, for the most part, you treat that on an individual basis. I'm always an advocate for international football because I've seen how much it helps young players develop. But again, you've always got to sort of measure that against kind of where they're at in their club situation. And uh, finally, four teenagers started for you last night. Um, I don't even like the Ange. Uh, Ange. Don't even say it, mate. Don't even say it. I'm going to go with Buster Cogley's prodigies. <laughs> You even struggled to say it, to be fair. So I don't think it's rolled off the tongue. In all seriousness, you are at least someone that puts uh, trust in young players. And, and for a, a senior manager, other clubs, sometimes that doesn't happen. Why, why are you so... Or, or how does that trust come about? Well, I mean, I, look, I think it's... I mean, I, you know, I think most managers would, would like if they've got talented youngsters to use them. But I just think for us where we are in, in, in terms of as a club, I think it's really important for this, for the what we're trying to build. Uh, like I said, I, I've always felt that clubs that have sustainable success have an, a real strong underpinning of young players who grow with the team, you know, so that invariably over a course of time players move on and when you're looking for replacements, they're already here, you know, and, and um, you yeah, know, whether that's guys who are, you know, club trained, like, you know, like particularly, say, Mikey, um, you know, Will's had a couple of years with us, uh, or we're bringing them in. I think, I said last night, the ones we bring in, like, we worked really hard to get Archie and, and Lucas to our club, and part of that was me saying, look, you come to our club, we'll develop you, and you will play, you'll get an opportunity. Now, it's easy for me to say that, get them to sign a contract, and then, you know, three months later, they, they, they haven't played at all, and then... You know, come next window, I go again and speak to the next 18 year old, and he turns around and says, Well, actually, you know what, the evidence doesn't back up what you're saying. So I have that responsibility. Um, but at the same time, they've, they've earned it, you know, and, and it's an easier decision for me to make when I see them every day and I say, Well, you know what, I have no fear about throwing them out there in terms of they're ready for it and they want to contribute. So, um, you know, it's always a balancing act. Uh, and you know, for a club like ours, I understand how important it is, particularly for for club trained players like uh, Mikey, to to make sure we keep that pathway open for him. Um, hi, Ange. Just wanted to follow up on Archie Gray. How was he so comfortable playing in so many different positions at such a young age? Well, he's got no choice because I'm <laughs> putting him there, and and that's part of kind of his development. But look, he's he's a, he's he's obviously look, he's a. It probably helps he comes from a footballing family. He's probably been exposed to football from the moment he was born, so I think he understands the game and, and you know, he understands. He takes information really well. He's, you know, trading. He's he's constantly looking for, for more and more information, which helps. And then he's, he's just got a great temperament, you know. He, he seems to take things in his stride and, and not let it, um, you know, affect him. Um, like I said last night, you know, played him in two different positions, but probably both aren't the least preferred for him, you know. I mean, he's played sort of right full-back and, and and midfield, but made him at left centre-back and left-back last night. So, um, And I thought he did brilliantly again. So, But, you know, I, I'm not going to just put him at different positions. It's, it's at the moment we're using him where we need him, and I think hopefully that gives him confidence in that's how much I trust him. But eventually, you know, we'll, we'll settle him into an area. But him playing at the moment, he's played... You know, he's played an FA Cup, uh, Carabao Cup game away. He's played two European games. He's had exposure in the Premier League already in the f- sort of first 10 games of his Tottenham career. I think it's great for us. You spoke about Herzler visiting the training ground and picking your brains, etc. 
Do you find it quite beneficial as well when these coaches speak to you because you get to share ideas with them? Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we've had quite a number come through. I'm, I've always been open to it. Um, I just don't think there's any real secrets in football. I, I think for the most part, <coughs> everything you need to know is, is kind of out there. But I do, I enjoy it. I, I, I think it's good for my staff to, to, to be exposed to it as well because, again, you know, football can become fairly insular. Um, yeah, we, we all talk about trying to block the outside noise. So whatever noise you do get in becomes really important. So I think having, you know, we've had guys from, you know, all sorts of football clubs, um, different nationalities from different sports come in and, and spend a day with us. And uh, I, always, I always enjoy it. And uh, I think it's, uh, it, it works both, both ways. I'll finish this section with George, please. Angelo, um, when the managers often talk about a rebuild, they sort of talk about suffering and going through a bit of pain. And I just wondered, the way you finished last season compared to the way you started this season, do you think you're almost possibly through that pain now when you, the good times are coming? What's the date? I reckon it was about 14 <laughs> days ago. That it was didn't feel like that. It felt like there was still a lot of suffering. It seemed. Um, it's just the way of the football world that that it's a very very fine line to what people's perception of how you're going it, it is. You know, and, and that's why you can't let that be your guide. You just can't. Not in today's world. It doesn't mean you ignore everything because you know there's some some probably astute observations as to how we're going and you need to address that. Some of that's around sort of whatever measurements we, we use to, to map, map our progress or, you know, what people, some people see is important to us. But ultimately, you've got to rely on something else other than where the spotlight is at the moment. And, you know, it didn't feel like that long ago that people were questioning everything I was doing. and and. Nothing's changed 14 days later, except for the results. But for me, even before that, I could see that the measurements we're looking for, we started the season well. You know, there was some real growth in us. Um, but it's it's not going to be a smooth road. You know, it's 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 we're not at that stage of being a team where things are just going to sort of you know click all the time. We're still going to go through some like you said suffering or challenges. But uh, that's important. You need to do that. Otherwise, you're never going to know how you're going to handle it. And I think so far we've handled it well. Um, one player who seems to be f flourishing is Dejan Kulisewski. Can you just talk about how his sort of role has evolved in the team and the way you're playing him and, and just basically what, what's led to his good run of form this season? Yeah, decky has been brilliant. Um, like, out of this world in many respects in terms of just what he, he's able to do in that sort of central role. Uh, you know, he, obviously we, we used him more as a wide player last year, but again, that's because we didn't have too many options out there and, you know, it was the area he was most comfortable in. But when we started using him inside, it just, I felt he 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 felt that kind of unshackled him a little bit and he's got an unbelievable capacity to, to, to run, you know, with and without the ball. Um, his physical numbers are ridiculous. Um and he has the quality to, to, to hurt teams with that. So, you know, I think at times maybe playing out wide, he felt a bit suppressed because in, especially in our system, you, there's a lot of times where you've got to hold your position and just do the thing for the team but not be involved. And he, he's the kind of player who wants to be involved. So obviously when, you know, we, we, we brought a couple of wide players in this year, um, you know, I, I really sort of thought, you know, let's let's go with him inside. Obviously, pre-season played him as a nine because we didn't have a nine, and even there, he, he made an impact. And um, the the beauty of Decky is, I think he's he's sort of just getting started. You know, um, he's he's really, I think, he enjoys the role. I think he can make a massive impact, and it just adds a different dimension to us because there isn't many players like him. And I know you joked about Fabian Hurst asking too many questions, but in all seriousness, if you knew he was going to be a Premier League manager this season, would you have still invited him into the training ground last season? <laughs> yes, mate. I would. I would. I, I think there's nothing wrong with being a nice person. Like I said, you know, um, it's, you know, if somebody comes and knocks on your door and wants a cup of tea and, you know, you... you, you you kind of, as a kindred spirit, you let him in your house, mate. It's all right. He's not going to take the furniture or steal the, the cutlery. Um, <laughs> you kind of trust that. So, um, yes, I would have let him in, mate. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, George. I'll be around the Monday then. <laughs>